Better. Okay. Well, let's get started. This is Sunday, the 14th of March already, and of 2021. It's amazing. It seems like we were so, so happy and to get 2020 over, and here we are halfway through the third month of 2021. It's, it's flying by, no doubt about it. But our lesson today is titled The Purpose of Humanity, and this is out of the Bible Studies for Life Young Adults uh, Manual. So it'll be the Christian Standard Bible Interpretation. But if yours is King James, New King James, whatever that may be, you should be able to follow along all right and, uh, and be okay with, our, with following with us. The point this week is God created us to serve and honor him. The passage, Genesis 1, 1 through 5, and 26 through 31. That's Genesis 1, 1 through 5 and 26 through 31. In the instructor book, The Life Connection says, we all have responsibilities, whether in our families, work, or church. With these responsibilities come expectations that we will act in such a way as to meet the expectations of those responsibilities. When God created the first man and woman, he gave them the responsibility of being his representatives over all creation. Every person since then has been given that same function, whether or not they recognize that role or act in such a way as to fulfill their duties. Our setting is going to come in uh, Genesis is a book of beginnings. In fact, the book's name comes from its opening words, in the beginning. Along with the account of creation, Genesis records the origins of human life and relationships, the first sin, and the rise of human civilization. Perhaps most important, Genesis provides the context of God's covenant with his people through Abraham. This Abrahamic covenant eventually pointing God's people to his provision of a savior. Now, as I slide over into the student uh, workbook, it, the, the first question uh, in the student workbook is, what's your least favorite household responsibility. And if you can see, there's a, a cat in a litter box there. And it asks, what's your least favorite household responsibility? And you know what? Uh, between my wife and I, that litter box is probably our least favorite thing to do. <laughs> and uh, so, I don't know what yours is, but God gave us the power and the responsibility overall. And that's what we're going to talk about today. In the student book, The Bible Meets Life says, the author says, one of my responsibilities around the house is to take out the trash. And let me tell you, I'm horrible at it. When I enter the house at night, I can tell by a single look from my wife whether I fulfilled my end of that bargain. Sometimes it's not even a look. It's an outright, straight-to-the-point question. Did you take out the trash, Robbie? Taking out the trash isn't even a difficult task. The trash bins are right by the back door. But somehow, I always manage to forget to do this one simple, obvious thing. I believe this gentleman's talking about me, by the way. As kids, many of us dreaded responsibility. And we know firsthand that responsibility is dealt to us in greater measure as we get older. But responsibility isn't a bad thing. God has built responsibility into us. He gave it to us when he put, his, put us on the earth. He coded us for it and gave us the tools to carry it out. And it's up to us to recognize what our responsibility is and to carry it out. So, and that's very important to understand that God tasked us with great responsibility when it comes to this earth. And, and you know, some things that we do uh, or people do, not necessarily us in general, some things that we do on this earth has been for the betterment. 
you know, I'm okay with uh, national parks. I'm okay with, you know, saving some of the animals on the earth, but there's a line there in how much should we do. And, you know, I can't answer that for you, but I think when we read, you know, God gave us dominion over the earth and, and we should never quell that uh, for the sake of, you know, someone like PETA or some group like PETA rather that, you know, thinks we should never do anything to any animal basically. And, and, that, and that's not correct either because God gave us dominion over those animals. And, and later on, he gives us dominion to eat those animals. So it's, it's a very difficult thing to think about when we are discussing, you know, what, what is our responsibility to the earth and what is our responsibility to the animals and the plants and all of those things. And only you can decide that for you. But in Genesis chapter one, verses one through five, in this Christian standard Bible interpretation, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. There was an evening and there was a morning one day. So, um, you know, you have to understand that as we read this, the, the first five books of our Christian Bible are, are pretty much said that Moses wrote those, the Pentateuch, and Moses wrote those. So we know then that Genesis was not written until Moses was old enough to carry out this responsibility. And it was probably even when uh, the children of Israel were wandering around out there. Uh, and when Moses wrote this after their Egyptian escape. So we have to understand that when we're talking about, you know, some of the, the timeline and some of the things, the way we read it when we read Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and those books through there, that Moses wrote these a considerable amount of time after the beginning. So what does that mean? Well, Moses still used the inspired word of God. He, he just didn't make these things up. Someone had to tell him these stories. Now, some of it may have come from generations of passed down through the Hebrew children, but a lot of it, I believe, came from God himself. I believe God inspired Moses to write this. And that's where he gets this from. The big question that a lot of us have and, and some Christians, you know, and I can't say that I've never wondered this myself is where did God come from? We know when the earth began because it tells us right here in Genesis when God said, boom, there's the earth. But where did God come from? Well, the, that is never covered, okay? It's never covered where God came from. He has just always been. And here in a moment, we're going to learn something else. But we have to, in our faith, and that's the key, is to use our faith, we have to accept that God has always been. And he is the creator of everything. And that's one of those faith-based things that we as Christians, you have to accept. So he was already there in the beginning. And when we talk about it, you know, it talks about the earth being just a, a formless mass. And it does mention water. So if we can say it was a formless, watery mass. And sometimes I think, when I think about that, I think about those old lava lamps. And I don't know how many people remember those lava lamps. But, you know, you took that lava lamp and you could move it. And I think that that moving and that shape in there, that's sort of what I think about when I think about the earth before God really truly spoke it into existence as we know it today is that lava lamp and, and that oil and that water just sort of shiftless and shapeless in there. And then God, 
you know, he decided, hey, it's time that we have someone to communicate with. Now, not to say there were not already angels. There were angels. There were cherubs. They were already there. They were worshiping God. But God wanted something different here. So he created the earth. And <clears throat> another thing to, to clarify here, when, when God said, let there be light, what happened? Well, the thing that happened, God said, let there be light, and there was light. He, he didn't have to do no abracadabra. He didn't have to do any weird chants or long sayings or, you know, throw bats wings in a cauldron pot. He didn't have to do any of that. All God said was, let there be light, and guess what? There was light. Boom, done. And, and that's how we know the true power of God. When he, when he speaks, things listen. The earth listens. So God is all powerful. He, he holds everything in his hands. He controls everything even today. And we need to remember that, that especially in our time, in this country, especially in the United States, when it seems like, and it, it doesn't really even seem like it, it is, but when the when the United States is so rapidly turning against God, you know, it, it's it's gone from a slow, insidious kind of creep to a race all of a sudden to wipe out God and, and take care of everything, anyone that follows him and 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 control that and wipe him out. So God is still in control even in that. And how do we know that? Well, we know what Revelation says. And I've said it many times, if the people who were trying so hard to prove that God is not real, that he did not speak the world, that it came from some weird, you know, cosmic chicken egg somewhere that cracked open and spilled out everything or from this primordial ooze, that's what they, another theory here is the primordial ooze, just all of a sudden life sprang from that. Well, where did the primordial ooze come from? You, you got to explain that now. So uh, we know as Christians where all of this originated, we know that God was there. God has always been. God is all powerful, all knowing, all loving, all caring. He is our heavenly father. And he wants what's best for us. And that's why he created us because he wanted someone to share his time with and he wanted us to have, you know, him to talk to. And we've gotten away from talking to God. We've gotten away from that relationship with God that he intended when he created Adam and Eve. So let me make sure I didn't have Oh, the only other thing is, is the light here, when we, when we talk about the light that he spoke, it didn't have anything to do with the sun. The sun and the moon and the stars and all of those things were not created until later on in the creation days, which is a whole other thing, you know, what, what if, whether you actually believe it's a 24-hour day like we have now. Or you go to the verse, and and this is the one I aspire to, and, and, and I don't know which one's right. It could have been straight 24-hour days, and that'd be fine with me, too. I don't know. Uh, I subscribe to the theory where, you know, when, when it says in the Bible, a day is, is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. I believe that time really had no bearing upon this, what the, the time, the way we think of it. I, I think that God created it all, but did he create light? And then, you know, it was another thousand years maybe before he, he did day two things. I, I don't know. That's the one I subscribe to. Um, I think that that also would explain dinosaurs and all that stuff that, you know, they say, well, this was, you know, 20,000 years ago. Well, yeah, okay, that's fine. You know, God's time's not our time. So there you go. I subscribe to that. and But whichever one you subscribe to uh, is probably accurate. So Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. 
They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. A lot of powerful stuff right here in this set of verses. A lot of powerful stuff that sort of guides the way we believe and what is right. So it starts off, let's, let's talk about something here that I said in a moment we would bring up. So in the beginning, it says God spoke these things into existence. And then here we are in Genesis 1, 26 and 27. So we're down toward day six here. And he says, let us make man, let us. Well, who was us? Well, we know, you know, once we get to the New Testament, and there's a lot of debate over this, okay? But we know once we have gotten to the New Testament that the us is the triune God. You had God, you had his son, Jesus, and it was his son when he came to earth, okay? But up there, it's a different relationship. But we had God, we had our Savior, Jesus Christ, and then we have the Holy Spirit, the one that, that God and Christ sent after Christ had arisen back to heaven that, that they sent to indwell in us, to help guide us, to give us a conscience, to allow us to be able to do the work that we should do. The one that comes to you when you're being called upon to go to the altar or called upon to just look up at the sky no matter where you're at. If you're in a tree stand, if you're in the car, wherever you're at, that Holy Spirit that's weighing on you to, to make the right decision. That's the one we're talking about. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little cough today. So as we look at that, he says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Oh, wow, there's a lot of, a lot of debate there. So what, what did they mean there? Do, do, do they, in heaven, do God and, and, and Jesus, do they look like us? Do they look two-legged mammalian beings? I don't know. Uh, the way, when I look at it and when I read it, um, I believe when it says we were created in their image, I'm, I think that it's a spiritual image. Now, this is my opinion, but I think it's a spiritual image. I think it was a spiritual connection that we were to have with them and they were to have with us not so much the actual physical outward appearance that we have uh, today. To be honest, I don't know. And I don't know that anybody truly knows what that, but I, I subscribe to that, that we, we were created in their image. And I think that's why in chapter five, I believe it is of Genesis, after sin had entered, when you read chapter five, it says Adam created Seth in his image. It didn't say Adam created Seth in God's image anymore because that spiritual sinless image was gone now. So Seth was created in the image of Adam, which was a sinning, sinful being now. So there you go, a little extra uh, thrown in there. That's free of charge just as to what I believe and why I believe that. Uh, part of it but we look at it and 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 they they're telling us that they're going to you know create us and they're going to give us a rule of fish of the sea the birds of the sky the livestock the whole earth and the creatures that crawl on the earth you know again uh we're going to talk here in a moment about something else but you know i, I like meat i like a good steak I uh, like a good pork chop. I like a good piece of chicken, fish, pretty much. I'll just try anything. But uh, yeah, I, I believe there are things that we've done uh, to not accurately take care of that. And I think about, especially in that, say the, the early 1800s to mid 1800s, when we had, and, and I'll, without any other way to say it, we had the white man who was on this Native American continent. And 
they were just rolling through, just killing buffalo only for the hides. They would leave the, the rest of the carcass, all the meat, everything. They'd leave everything. And they were killing them strictly solely for the hides and letting the rest go to ruin. And they were not killing just, uh, you know, one or two or three maybe to, to keep them warm or whatnot. They were killing them by the thousands. And, and I don't believe that was right. I don't believe that's what God intended us when he gave us dominion over those animals. I think that he intended us to take care of those animals. I do. Uh, I don't think he intended us to take care of those animals at the cost of human life. But, um, you know, I was listening on that to, uh, I listened to the Robertson's Unashamed podcast. And Jace was talking on there one day about the Louisiana law for uh, if you come into contact with the bear, with a bear, and it, and it gave all these things. And then it said, but do not shoot the bear. And, and he's like, you know what? Let me just tell you, you know, it's not going to be my intention to shoot that bear. But if that bear comes at me, I'm going to shoot the bear. And, but that's, that was in there. And it's in bold. It says, but do not shoot the bear. And, you know, that's, that's where we've gotten to is at the cost of human life. And, and that's not correct. I don't think he intended that either. So what did he intend? I'll be honest, you know, again, I have my own opinions. You have your opinions, but God, when he created us, he created us as different beings. And, and that's, that's what we're getting at here in this set of scriptures. He created us as different beings. He created us to rule over everything else that was on the earth. So he, he put us in a position of power. He put us in a position of authority. Now that power and authority comes from him. It's only granted by him. So we have to work under that, that constraint or restraint of what he allows us to do. And if you look around, you say, well, why is he allowing this? Or why is he allowing that? And, you know, I think that part of it is because Certain things have to happen. Certain things have to occur so that Christ can come back and receive his church. And was it God's intention for man to sin? No. Was it God's intention for us to still be sinners? No, it was not. Um, we are, uh, by our nature, sinful beings and will always be sinful beings. But he offered us salvation, which kind of helps wipe that slate clean and allows us a new start. And, and, you know, how many times do you truly ever get a new start in life? Well, this is one of them when you can change from your old life to the new life of following Christ. But I digress again. Um, you know, he spoke to the Godhead, which we talked about, but <laughs> scripture never wavers. Um, never ever wavers in the fact that uh, he created us in his own image in the beginning. And then the last part here is he created them male and female. Oh, that is a huge discussion today, isn't it? Created them male and female. So with that being said, let's move on to uh, the probably the biggest, the largest part of this this lesson and that's genesis chapter 1 verses 28 through 31 genesis chapter 1 verses 28 through 31 it says god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it rule the fish of the sea the birds of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth God also said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains seed. This will be food for you. For all the wildlife of the earth, for every bird of the sky and for every creature that crawls on the earth, everything having the breath of life in it 
I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good indeed. Evening came, and then morning, the sixth day. Ah, fixing to step into the step into the goo here. Uh, when I post this on YouTube, there'll be somebody I'm sure want to try to wipe this one out. But God created them male and female. He didn't create male and male or female and female. He didn't create us to be in those relationships. He created Adam, a male. And later on, he saw that male, the male needed companionship and he created female to be that companion, to be that other half for the male. And another thing that he did was created us as two different beings so that we could complete each other. So we know, uh, and, and everybody on here knows, and everybody that will watch it later knows that male and female, men and women are different. We have different mindsets. We have different needs. And God created us that way. He, he created us again. I have certain attributes. I have certain inconsistencies. I have certain stubbornness. I have certain things that my wife is the opposite of in a lot of ways, except for the stubbornness part. We're both fairly stubborn and uh, that gets us into trouble some days, but um, we, she completes the other part of me that, that I don't have, that I cannot grasp, but God did not give me. And I know it's that way for a lot of you that's on, on the uh, Zoom today. So <laughs> he created them male and female. So what do they say? We didn't say he created them Adam and Steve. That, that's one of, our, one of the sayings out there. Not Adam and Steve, but Adam and Eve, the, the female portion. And the other thing he said is be fruitful, multiply. So when you look at that, um, a few things come to mind about this. Number one, he, he told them be fruitful and multiply. What he said was, I want you to make a lot of babies and, and populate this earth. And, and in the beginning, in the beginning, that was pretty easy. Uh, as we find out later, there was no pain associated with childbirth. There was no pain, you know, discomfort, anything like that at the time. So, you know, he told them, and, and the other thing is, is you have to have male and female. There's nothing that they're, they can do so far on this earth. No scientists, no nothing. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm just going to say it. Uh, we know at the time they were a couple. And, and so those of you, some of you may know, but a lesbian couple who wanted a baby. Well, guess what? They can't have a baby. So what did they have to do? Well, they had to go get that ingredient from, from a bank or from someone and then have one of them to receive that secret ingredient there. Well, where did that secret ingredient come from? It came from a male. Or, and, and we see it the same thing in two males when they're in a relationship. They have to have the female somewhere to create and, and hold that baby and to birth that baby and then to give it to them. So I, I don't understand the, the problem with this. You could get rid of all of that if you would just do the male and the female like God intended it to begin with. Okay, back to our lesson. I keep, I keep getting off here, but marriage is a relationship between male and females. Now this also endorses sexuality in a marriage. It endorses, it gives us permission to do that because in a marriage you need that closeness. And, and we all know that. And there's, there's times as, as married couples when life, you know, tends to get in the way of certain things and, and you seem like you're, you're growing apart 
So we need that closeness. We need that that ability to, to be close to the other person uh, to make our marriage work. And then, of course, later on, if we find out after the one fruit that he told them they couldn't eat, they did, that pain came with that childbirth and the, the rate of birthing children, I'm sure, dropped dramatically after that. But um, another thing is, as the author says, this should not be interpreted as a blanket command for all people. You know, it was intended for Adam and Eve uh, to do that. So it's not a blanket command for every couple and every relationship to have any kids, but to have one kid or uh, if someone we know have six kids, it's a, it's, it's, it's a command for us to, to multiply and that it's okay uh, to bring children into this earth. And then uh, he gave us dominion over all of it. He gave us all the seed bearing plants and trees to eat. Some people take this as, this is, you know, God's command to be vegetarians. You know what? And maybe up and through getting it closer to the New Testament, maybe where he gave them, and I say closer to the New Testament, not necessarily him, but where he gave us permission to eat meat. Uh, maybe they were vegetarians up to that point. I don't know. Um, I, for one, am very happy that he changed that. But uh, if you want to be a vegetarian, be a vegetarian. I don't care. Um, and, and maybe that's what he intended in the beginning, but he changed that, uh, later on, uh, running out of time here. So, you know, and another thing it says, some individuals tend to worship the creation more than the creator. This misplaced worship of some does not negate the requirement God has placed on his people regarding what he has made. So do you see it uh, in today's time where, where God is sort of being pushed behind the things that he created? You know, it was never intended to be that way. It was always intended for us to be pleased. I mean, I look out my window today and I see trees and, you know, you can watch birds and Occasionally I'll look out there and I can see deer walking through the woods or the dogs or whatever the case may be. And, and, and it's beautiful. Uh, and, and God gave us that to look at. The sun's coming up there. Thank goodness we're getting closer to summertime in a way because now that sun, instead of coming right through this light or this window right here and blinding me in the morning, it's going to slide on toward the end of the house and I won't be blinded every morning sitting here. But, um, you know, it's all beautiful. But God gave us dominion over that. He gave us the power to, to, to control that. And <clears throat> I don't think as we sit here, and, and I don't remember the exact, uh, the way it says it. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, Brother David probably could tell you right off his tip of his tongue. But, um, you know, when, when we look out there, you know, the, one of the questions in the Bible, well, how does, if someone never hears the word of God, so we never get a, an opportunity to actually speak and they hear the word of God. Well, what it says in there is that if you'll just look around at creation, creation cries out God's existence. Creation cries out that God is the creator. So even if you've never heard it, you should understand that there's a creator that created you and everything in it. And that's the creator you should worship, not a sun God and a moon God and a tree God and a water God and a fire God and a whatever, you know, war God, <clears throat> a single, in this case, triune being created us. We're down to about four minutes now. And uh, so we're going to read. So it's being made in the image of God is a great blessing, but it's also a huge responsibility. Consider the following action steps. Enjoy God's creation. In Genesis, we read that God considered his creation very good indeed. Go on a nature walk. Look, looking for aspects of God's creation you can enjoy. Praise God for his creation. And as we know, it's getting springtime now. It's warming up. You know, the water seeks to come back into play in boats and sea dews and you know, tubing and all those things that we can have fun on the water. It says, see God in his creation. 
We were all created in God's image, whether or not we bear that image well. As you interact with others this week, look for opportunities to represent God's love. Care for God's creation. God's creation includes the earth, the plants, the animals, and the people. We are called to be caretakers of all these. Volunteer with a nonprofit in your area that helps take care of one of these groups. As you serve, remember that you are representing God's love of his creation. We are God's creation, and it's an honor to be his image bearers and represent him. God has built responsibility into us. He gave it to us when he put us on the earth. It's up to us to recognize what our responsibility is and carry it out. And I think that's where a lot of times we fail right there is the carry it out part. So down to a couple minutes here. I want to thank all of you for being on the Zoom Sunday school today. I appreciate it. It does my heart good to get on here and see see these things, you know, pop up and have to let people in. And uh, I do it, it. I thank y'all for being on. Now we have church service today starting at 1030 at Antioch Baptist Church here in Alcorn County, Mississippi. Um, please be there. Pray before you come. Bring God with you. Next Sunday, we will be back in regular Sunday school uh, classrooms, and I'm trying to figure out what I want I want to do it. I do would want to continue on with uh, a presentation. We may, once I talk to my Sunday school class, we may do something more like YouTube live or Facebook live uh, to carry that out. But I do want to do that and continue maybe to grow this outreach uh, for Christ, for God, for our church. And I hope it grows. Again, I thank you all. I love you all. I will see a lot of you here shortly. And we'll be back hopefully next week on here in some fashion. Bye.